Welcome everyone to Gresham High School for tonight's league matchup between the Gresham Gophers and the St. Academy, St. Mary's Academy team. Good evening everyone, Sean Philipson alongside PJ Miller on hand. And this is going to be an exciting game tonight. Both teams coming on some good wins over the tournaments in the winter. So PJ, what do you expect to see tonight? Well, I expect to see a lot of up and down basketball from St. Mary's. They're an up-tempo team. They take, like to take a lot of long shots, and they're going to probably have a lot of long rebounds as well. So watch Gresham to take advantage of that, run when they can, and when they can't, slow it down, run good offensive sets. Not only that, St. Mary's Academy has played very good defense so far. Most of their players who are starting tonight, they really are going after the ball, like hands-on. Yeah, um, one of the things that Gresham really needs to do is they need to make sure that they are controlled in what they're doing, um, make uh, good decisions out there, and not give St. Mary's an opportunity to to make make sure that we're that they're um, going in and getting good shots, controlling what they can do. All right, coming up next, we'll have some team statistics for both teams and much more to come. Back with you on Metro East, Sean Phillips on side with P.J. Miller, and right now we're going into league standing. So, P.J., so far both teams are coming along pretty well so far the season. So, when we look at the, the league, you know, you got Gresham in this uh, Mount Hood Conference. You got Central Catholic, who is another uh, one of the top teams in the conference. So, yes. there, there's a lot of good competition out here in the Metro Conference that or in the uh, Mount Hood Conference that these teams are going to have to be playing. And now that they're starting in their league play, it's going to be interesting to see kind of how it all shakes out for these teams because, you know, you got a team like Gresham who struggled a little bit last year, but they're trying to make something happen this year. You know, we talked to uh, Sarah Beth, the coach of uh, Gresham a little bit earlier and she says this is probably the first time that her team actually believes that they have a chance to win yeah. so it, it, that's a great thing to hear from a coach and let alone they want to contend for a playoff run for Gresham because they've had some highs and lows and they haven't done so well in recent years coming up next we'll have the coaches preview and much more to come here on Metro East in 77 an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father the odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European pro golf tours one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the U.S. Open twice. One in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism. One in 88. Ernie Els encourages you to learn the signs of autism. Back with you on Metro East Sports. Sean Phillips and P.J. Miller on hand. And right now, we're going to get into the starting lineups for both teams. First for the road, St. Mary's Academy. We'll start with Martina McCowan at guard, Tasia Bilbadu at the other guard, Nay Torango, CC Wooten, and Tyshell Blake, the lineups for St. Mary's starting five. For Gresham, Bailey Allen will get the start tonight. Amber Pesca will start. She's a wing and guard player. Pearlie Walton, Melissa Smith, and Haley Treppel in at the forward. This should be a pretty good matchup for both teams, and Quinn, Sant Quinn Santangelo will also get the start tonight for Gresham. So we'll see how both teams will fare off. This is about ready to start the anthem, so we will take a break, and when we come back, we'll have the first half underway. This is Metro East Sports TV. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. We're just about ready to start off the first quarter of play. Eight-minute quarters, as this is the first game of league play, as both teams had their neutral home way games so far during the latter part of the winter in December. And we're just about ready to tip it off. Gophers in their home whites with the blue lettering and blue trim. And St. Mary's in the road blue and black uniforms tonight. It will be Pesca and Blake to tip. And the tip off one for St. Mary's and we are underway here in Gresham. 
And what do you expect to see tonight for the defense of uh, the Gophers? PJ. Look for a lot of pressure from um, Gresham as they try to uh, uh, put the pressure on. And a, basket, and a basket counts foul. Wooten gets the bump and a three-point play. Good offensive attack, though, for St. Mary's. They're going right after the boards early on in this first couple minutes. 7.42 just underway in the first. And Wooten to the line for the three-point possibility. She is a junior. Middle school she came from with Jason Lee. The free throw is good. 3-0 to score with St. Mary's leading it. You know, you got to look right here. Gresham um, has a little bit of a size disadvantage. St. Mary's is going to really crash the boards out there. So Gresham's going to have to do a good job of boxing out. They really do. They need to really get some up-tempo game. You can't go slow against St. Mary's because they're so active on the ball. And a foul away from the ball will be a turnover on Gresham. I believe that was a five-second five call. Five-second five second call. Turnover nevertheless for Gresham and St. Mary's back the other way. Seven and a half under in the first quarter. Jumble drive, drive right to the hoop, no good, put up and in. As Wooten has five, all five of St. Mary's points so far and foul in the backcourt will be on St. Mary's. Davis has been able to get into the lane at will. That's something that Gresham's gonna have to stop. They have to stop that penetration, make them play from the perimeter. And let alone for Wooten, that is her first foul of the game. So both teams with a even foul. And then the pressure in the backcourt on the Gresham. They have to get it past the 10 second line, and they do. And it's over and back. Uh, actually, she, ste she stepped she out stepped, of bounds. She stepped out of bounds. It's going to tell from where we're at. But effective. Again, another turnover for Gresham. Toriango inbounds the ball into McCowan. Cowan, 5'8. She's a junior for this. St. Mary's team, ball in the paint, no good, thrown up, tipped up in the air, claimed by Gresham. 5 nothing the score, 6.50 remaining in the first. Smith brings up the timeline. Man-to-man -man defense for St. Mary's. In the lane, almost got a bump inside, and in, missed shot by Walton, put back up, no, but a foul called, and that's what you'd like to see if you're Gresham with St. Mary's being as aggressive as they are on defense, looking for steals, make them force them some little mistakes. Yeah, St. Mary's is doing a good job. They're bumping everybody, coming off screens, or not letting anybody come clean off those screens, trying to stop the shooters from getting open. Um, great job, a little too much there with the foul. Tyshell Blake, the foul, her first. The free throw up and good by Treppel. She's a forward, 5'8", and a senior. One of the senior leaders for Gresham and the second foul shot up and off. And rebound taken by Blake. Very good post player for St. Mary's. McCowan stops, finds the inside presence of Wooten, and she has seven points in the first quarter. And Gresham is starting to fall away quickly, down seven to one. And early start goes to St. Mary's on the road. We haven't seen that much in past games. Normally they would slip on the road, but they're playing well. Ball deflected out of bounds will return to the Gophers. 6.09 left in the first. Gresham needs, needs to slow it down, yes. um, get the ball under control, work for a good shot. There's no shot clock in high school basketball. Right. They can work the ball around the outside, make good passes. Ball slipped, turned over again by Gresham. Three turnovers to start off the first quarter. Tori Agano puts one up and finds Blake for the nice layup and a timeout. 30-second timeout by St. Mary. So they're off to a strong start. 9-1. to one. We will take one, two. 5.55 left. First quarter. Torrey we'll be Agano back here on Metro Cooks Sports. Cooks one up and finds Blake for the nice layup and a timeout. Something is lagging off of that. And we're back. Gresham down 9-1 to one in the early part of the first quarter. 5.55 left in the first ball. On the inbounds, thrown away by Walton. She was trying to find Bailey Allen on the near side and couldn't give it to her. Turnover again for Gresham. And St. Mary's to inbound the ball in the back court to Wooten. And here comes the ball movement so far for 
Academy. They are one of the good teams to, good, to be good facilitators and be patient. Torgano, she has very good ball handling skills out there uh, playing for St. Mary's. And a turnover there, first for St. Mary's, and back the other end, and we got a reach-in foul, push away on St. Mary's. Yeah, it looks like that'll be on Torgano. Torgano will pick up the foul. Also a senior for St. Mary's. And that will be her second foul, so you gotta be wondering, should they take her out in the early part of the first? As the Gophers inbound the ball to Smith, ball lost and recovered by Gresham. Tell you what, St. Mary's is playing aggressive defense early, and that's what they like to do, go after those steals, and there's another one right there. And the Gopher and the Blues are off and running. Lost ball out of bounds, off of the hands of McGowan. Try to do too much and try to force it herself, turnover St. Mary's. 518 left in the first. St. Mary's is pressuring a lot right now. Gophers have to break the press right here. And try to find open shots as well. But I haven't seen that yet in this first quarter. They need to get early offense. Coaches always say the ball can travel faster than you can run. Yes. Make sure you pass the ball around. Smith underneath the hoop threw it up way off the mark. And here comes St. Mary's the other way. Toriango driving baseline. Bumped by Walton. Finds an open shot, that's good by Wooten, and Wooten is off to a strong first quarter start. And back comes away the Gophers again. 11 to one the score in the early part of the quarter. Loose ball again, and St. Mary's with the turnover, with the steal again, and now we got a dead ball. Looks like an injury to uh, Tarragano. Oh. Um, looks like she jammed her finger, oh, or she got some blood or something. She's. Uh, um, she's went off to the sidelines, so we'll see. Her. We would likely see her back in the act. St. Mary's inbound, 11 of one. The score, four and a half remaining in the first quarter. We have Jerry Peterson on the right. sideline, so maybe we can get a, a sideline report, figure out what's going on down there. Yes, and there's a foul there. Now be free throws. Looks like we're going to have the first substitution of the game. Quinn Santiago is going to be coming in for Gresham at the next free throw, after the free throw. And that's good by Bill Pro. Number 25, Quinn Santiago, check in for the Gophers. Bailey Allen is the player that comes out. 12-1 to score, early going. And this is what I mentioned earlier for St. Mary's. They go on the attack early. It's hard to catch them, and a second free throw missed of two. And Gresham boards. 12 to 1 score. Pesca with the ball. And again, St. Mary's Academy in that man to man defense are really pressuring the perimeter. Ball deflected out of bounds, recovered by Gresham. And we got a substitution coming in off the bench as Wooten will come out. And Holly Furr coming in off the floor for St. Mary's. One thing that Gresham really needs to do here is they need to set some picks for each other. They're kind of running around trying to pass the ball, but they need to set some picks to get some openings. Let alone the double team came there and a strip and a steal to the hoop. Lay it up and in for McGowan. And a timeout taken by Gresham. And it will likely be full. We'll see. 30 second timeout. 30 second timeout so, so far, PJ. This has not been what Gresham expected to come off with. 14 of one. They really have had some sloppy plays early in the first quarter. They have not gotten ball movement. They're not getting good picks, like you said. Yeah, St. Mary's is a very athletic team. They can get out and they can play some pressure defense. Gresham needs to figure out how they're going to get open and make some good passes and some screens so that they can get those cuts. Right now what they're trying to do is they're just trying to pass it around the outside and St. Mary's is fast enough and then they're playing in the lanes that they're getting tip balls and they're getting steals off that. So Gresham needs to find a way to get open for each other. Let alone, like I mentioned, they need good spacing when you're playing at a slow game with quickness and athleticism like Academy to get they break the press, get Gresham and a five second call, no traveling, traveling violation on Gresham. Chalk up another turnover on the Gophers, and the Blues will get it back. But Gresham did a good job of breaking the press there. They yes, got they the did. ball up, and then they were able to—they were going to slow it down. So they were—they were doing the right thing. 
in the lane. Field goal up and good. Tyshell Blake, the six foot post sophomore. And again, this has been a awkward first quarter for Gresham. Only one point, and that came on a free throw. Early part of the first quarter. And Gresham trying to break the press, and they do in succession. Got the ball and recovered by Trapples. He puts one up and missed, and rebound grab for St. Mary's. Good lob pass down the court, and Tyshell Blake with yet another field goal. And with three minutes to go in the first, it's looking like a runaway right now for St. Mary's. Again, full court pressure in the backcourt. Gophers trying to get it in. They do. They get the foul as Chapel gets a shot up in the act of shooting. Only the third team foul of the quarter on St. Mary's. Fourth, one, excuse me. Go ahead. One of the things that St. Mary's is doing really well at the other end, one, they're running the court. Um, yeah. Their point guards are getting out on the break. Their, their uh, posts are out running the Gresham Gophers down the down the court, so they're getting open looks in the lane. Second of all, they are setting some back picks, some good screens out there by St. Mary's, and that's getting open shots uh, for St. Mary's. Tasia Bellbrew with her foul, her first foul, 14 foul in the quarter on St. Mary's. And this is what I would like to see from Gresham. You force them to be too aggressive, go to the line and make some shots, but you cannot afford to miss another one there. As St. Mary's back the other end, 18 of one lead as a foul called on Gresham. And that will be on Pearlie Walton. Yeah, she did a pretty good job of getting back on defense, and she had a clean block. She just put her left hand on the offensive player, which she really didn't need to do. She had a good block there. She did. And the first free throw up and right through the net. As Anna Davis to the line, knocks that one in. And reserve off the bench, it will be Diana Allen on the floor for Tasia Bilbrew. And one more up at the free throw line for Davis is good. 20 to one lead in the first quarter for St. Mary's. And we're traveling in the backcourt on Bailey Allen. So far, all the mistakes, Gresham has put themselves in the first, down 19. And PJ, this is not what you like to see early in the first quarter. Turnovers, not getting the ball through the hoop. It's not been a good game. Well, so they, far. Have some, they have some things that they can build on. They're they doing some, some pretty good things, but they just need to cut down on the mistakes, like you said. Yeah, missed shot up in the air by Sunderland, who's a checked in, and a jump ball, possession arrow turns to Gresham. So Gresham will inbound in the backcourt, 232 remaining in the first. A little bit of a different press here by St. Mary's. They weren't going at the too high press this time. Yeah, and they, and they throw it away a little too far out of reach for Walton. And now we have another substitution coming in off the floor for both teams. And Melissa Smith will be, will be returning to the floor. And St. Mary's to inbound on the sideline. Get it in to Pam Carter, who's in. We may not even see the whole starting lineup come in and push off on Gresham. That will be on Medina. That will be her first. 5-6 junior. And the fourth team foul in the quarter for Gresham. Both teams with 14 fouls. A little bit of a man-to-man -man defense. Shot up for three rim short rebound. No one's going to get the ball returned to Gresham. It's pretty good defense there by Gresham. They moved yes. their feet, stayed in front, made them shoot the outside shot, not giving them those lanes. Gresham, there's a good screen you pointed out earlier in the game. They need to get some good screens, get some... High pick and rolls, and there's a turnover again on Gresham. The Gophers have not done good. I mean, they're getting the ball down the court at times, but they just make little mental mistakes with shuffling the feet and not able to go for a hoop. Yeah, at least the, the mistakes that they're making, they're, they're, they're trying to put pressure on St. Mary's. They're, they're yeah. going towards the basket. So that's a good thing that you can take from that. Yeah, and they want to be as aggressive as St. Mary, but when you're down this big, it's really hard to overcome at this point. Fur lobs it down the floor. Vehicle roll, no good by Flynn. And rebound, grab, and a loose ball foul on St. Mary's. And the foul committed on Claire Flynn, the senior, her first. Taya Mick comes in for Gresham. And the 15 foul on St. Mary's. And this is what, if you're 
Gresham. You can chalk at this lead a little bit, but you need to make sure you get the plays down the floor and try to go to that free throw line to slow the game down and look for good offense. Another loose ball, and it's stripped away by St. Mary's yet again. Another turnover, 20-1 to the score, and a blocking foul on the play for Gresham. She was really close to getting the charge there. She yeah. just kind of slid left just at the last moment, and that caused the blocking call. And Melissa Smith picks up her second foul of the quarter. Medina will go to the bench. And St. Mary's inbound underneath the basket. 120 left in the first. St. Mary's puts one up, a shot missed by Sunderland, and rebound offensively for, for the Blues. Sunderland with the ball now, and this is good defense. They just need that. They just need to get some good plays off of the nice play. That was a good play by Pam Carter, to getting the ball off of Pesca off her stomach, and gets it for a possession save for St. Mary's. Yeah, Gresham right now doing a good job of playing defense. They're staying in front, not trying to give them any of those lanes. And a couple reserves in off the bench as Blair Sellers will sub in off the bench. A little bit of a taller lineup for St. Mary's. A three thrown up and in. Holly Furrer with the bomb, and it's 23 to 1 with less than a minute remaining in the first quarter. Ball stripped away by St. Mary's. Great play by Wooten. And Sellers from 15, no good. Rebound, tipped up in the air, recovered by St. Mary's again. And a shot from 20 from the left side is good. As Blair Sellers making her presence felt in the opening part of the quarter. We talked to Coach Sarah Beth for Gresham earlier um, before the game, and she said one of the things that they really need to concentrate on is closing out on the shooters for St. Mary's. Without a doubt. 20 seconds left for the first, and if I'm Gresham, you would really like to hold for one, but as, a, as aggressive as St. Mary's has, if there's another one right there, he can't score. 25 to 1 with 10 seconds left in the quarter. Fast break opportunity for St. Mary's, but a strip by Gresham, five seconds left for the quarter. It is Peska from 50 feet, no good, and that will end the first quarter. 25 to one the score as we end one here on Metro Esports. In 1977, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European pro golf tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the U.S. Open twice, one in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 88. Ernie Els encourages you to learn the signs of autism. Back with you on the second quarter on Metro Esports. Sean Phillipson at P.J. Miller on hand this evening here in Gresham High School, home of the Gophers as an impressive first quarter start for St. Mary's, 25 to one, but there's still a lot of time left for Gresham. They can really, they can really try to take whatever, they can take the negative from that first and really do good in the second. Backdoor cut, nice block shot by the Gophers, and here they come with the ball. They need to be aggressive. And that's a good play out of the timeout. As Pesca hands it off. Ball dribbled off by Seed. The said and double team in the corner for St. Mary's off underneath the legs of St. Mary's, but it's off of Gresham. St. Mary's has run that same play up at the top of the key where they set that back pick, and it's been open every time. Gresham needs to make sure that they kind of play off of that yes. and they can or bump the bump the cutter as they go through. Indeed. And we're just underway in the second quarter. Double drive. Bank shot off the rim, no good, and rebound by Gresham. And that's what we would like to see from Gresham. You know, they need to get effective on rebounding and get some points. First shot up and banked in. Nice shot by Bailey Allen, her first field goal of the game and for the points of Gresham from the field. That was a good job by uh, Bailey. She got into the key and yes. um, hit that shot. That was a tough shot. It was. Backdoor cut, put up off the glass, no good. Rebound Gresham. A lot of time left. Looking right now at Bailey and looking in her eyes, she looks like uh, a girl possessed. She uh, wants to do some, some something special here. Indeed, yes. Put up with the right hand is good by Treppel. And all of a sudden, back-to-back -back baskets for Gresham. And now they're coming alive just a little bit. 
And the foul reached in on Gresham at the other end. Gresham's making those key passes that they were kind of having a little bit trouble with earlier. Um, they're getting some space in between the, the themselves and the defender so that they can make those passes. Um, so they're doing a good job dribble penetration. That's causing defenders to collapse, and they're able to kick it out. So a good job of uh, working on some keys from that first quarter. Gail Allen on that last play picked up her second foul for Gresham. And speaking of Allen, she's playing good defense right now on Braille Brew. Not giving her the ball, but she gets it back, goes to the hoop with the right hand, no good, put up, no. Rebound for a third time is fouled. Good effort by Wooten to stay with the ball and get the foul. Wooten's doing some work there on the boards. Absolutely. She's going on the offensive glass. It's great to see those players that, you know, sometimes it's the, the garbage points down low don't get a lot of credit sometimes. And she just, she's doing the work, boxing out players going up hard for rebounds and going right back up for that. So a good job by her down low doing the dirty work. And Bailey Allen just picked up her third foul in the first half, and Smith will sub in for Gresham, and the free throw is good. Timeout taking by St. Mary's full timeout. We'll take a break as well. 6.19 left in the second quarter, and Gresham down 27-5. to five. This is Metro Sports Sports. Yes, I am. Give it to him hard. No, no, no. Every day, kids witness bullying. Why are you stabbing me with it? They want to help, but don't know how. Teach your kids how to be more than a bystander. Visit stopbullying.gov. Back with you on Metro Esports as the inbounds for Gresham. And turnover there by Gresham. All right. Yeah, Gresham is they they're they're getting some offensive threat so far, but they haven't done good scoring. As St. Mary's again throws a shot up and out of bounds goes to Gresham. Good help defense. Scary play there. We had oh, about yeah. three players go down as uh, she shot that. Um, Got to be careful of those knees. Yeah, you don't want to get bumped knee to knee on any play. 6.02 left in the first. And a turnover on so, Gresham. Five seconds. Uh, it was an inbound violation. Inbound, I believe she, yeah, stepped, she stepped okay. inbound. She stepped inbound before she came in, yes. Ball inbounds for St. Mary's. It's 27 to 5. There's still a lot of time left for a comeback. If you're Gresham, you need to be aggressive, though. Ball thrown up in the air. No good rebound by the Gophers. Ball control is also one of their key things. They must do good in this quarter and the game because, as again, St. Mary's a really good steal team. Pesca for Gresham. Five and a half remaining in the first. Pesca in the trap hold. Trap hold, double drive, goes up with the right-handed banker. No good. Rebound taken by St. Mary's. Got a fast break, go to work, but it's out of the hands and a turnover on St. Mary's. That was a good drive there by oh, yeah. um, Trappel. She did a good job of getting into the key, um, getting up a good shot. You know, it didn't go in, but she worked to get a good shot. Trying to get it in, and they do. Again, the press in the backcourt for St. Mary's. This is what they've been doing for the most of this first half. They're really denying the ball and not allowing teams to score down the paint. Good ball movement in the lane, put up and in. Nice shot quality for Haley Trappold for the senior for Gresham. And Gresham. it's 27 to seven. That's a good job of getting the ball movement that we talked about a little bit earlier. Yes. Um, get, finding the open player and then making that extra pass to get the open land. Here's a screen set by Wooten. Try to throw up a foul and two Blue shirts got for the rebound. One of them did, thrown high off the glass, and it's off the top of the backboard, so it will be Gresham Ball. And, per and Pearly Walton will come back into the game for Gresham. 4.50 remaining in the first half. Peshka's working so hard she came out of her shoe there. Yeah. He was jumping high up for that ball, but that ball went up to the top of the backboard. But nevertheless effective and a nice play. 4.50 left in the second. For Gresham, they trailed as many as 24 in this first half. They've cut four off of the lead. 
No good on the layup attempt by Gresham, and here comes the St. Mary's the other way. Again, another quality shot there by Gresham. Didn't go in, but they're getting the shots. And speaking of shots, a shot wide open missed by Bilbrew. Offensive rebound by St. Mary's. Bilbrew gets it back. No. Nice offensive rebound for Wooten, and he, he puts it down. And it's 29-7, 4.22 left, second quarter. And again, the press. Wooten's very physical down low. She kind of uh, pushed herself around in there to get that rebound. Blake hands it off, and a foul called. That's McCowan. It's a charge. Charge, excuse me. Couldn't tell from the vantage point, but still a good play. Try to go in the lane to a foul, and, and let alone Gresham did good defensively. Get positioned that time for the charge. 29-7 to seven the score. The inbounds for Gresham. They get it down the floor and deflected out of the air. It will return back to Gresham. Boy, it looked like it was off of Ty Ty out of Blake's hands. But Gresham will get it back nevertheless. So a lot of time left. Pesca double teamed on the baseline and fouled. St. Mary's does a really good job. They have very good awareness spatially on defense. Uh, we're seeing that the post players, they know when they set that trap that they need to come cover that open player so that it makes it a pass that has to go further across the court. So a good job on St. Mary's defense of knowing who to, where to be on that trap. I wonder if we have anything from Jerry in the uh, sideline report. What do you have, Jerry? Yeah, we're down here on the St. Mary's sideline. Uh, Tay Norgano. She had a jam finger, and she got him taped up. She's going to be probably going back in the game in the second half. She's really excited about getting back in. She says she's okay. All right, thank you, Jerry. First foul shot up and no good. It's a one and one, so both teams are in the bonus with 17 fouls. If we go up to 10 early in, the, in this quarter, it will be double bonus. So basically, no teams have fouls to give. Traveling violation on, tight, on Blake as he was trying to make a spin but move the pivot foot. It's good to hear is going to be coming back. You know, she's one of the players that um, we kind of wanted to take a look at here. Um, highly regarded player, so it's good to see her um, okay and coming back into the game here, hopefully. Double team in the backcourt. Loose ball on the floor, picked up by St. Mary's. The 10-footer is right through the bottom for Anna Davis. 5'8", senior. Again, the double team pressure in the backcourt. They get an open man. It's trappled. She drives, loses the ball. Out of her hands, recovered by Gresham. Three-pointer, no good by Walton. Rebound, out of bounds. Recut will be St. Mary's ball. Yeah, it was a struggle for that rebound, and it uh, ended up going off of uh, Melissa Smith's hand. So, Tysho Blake will come out of the game for Gresham. A good first half for her, going all around the court. St. Mary's up 31-7. Still plenty of time for Gresham. They can get aggressive and get some shots their way. They can really make this interesting. 3-10 left. Good ball movement so far for St. Mary's. They're just getting some good clock management down their way. Dribble drive, strip, clean play. Got it back up, thrown off the mark by Wooten and rebound by Gresham. But off of the hands of St. Mary's. Trappled, again, doing a good job of boxing out down yes. there. Um, St. Mary's is, is quite a bit taller than most of the Gresham players. So they're really going to have to work to get those rebounds, and that's what Trappled's been doing. She's doing on both the offense and defensive end right now. And Blake in for Wooten for some offense-defensive purposes. It's a ball in the backcourt. And able to get free. There's a good screen in the backcourt. Now it's two on one. Gresham down the lane, no good, off the, underneath the hoop, and a jump ball possession arrow turns to Gresham on the alternating possession. If you're Gresham, Gresham coach Sarah Beth, you want to see um, Peshka pass that ball over to um, Trappold and then maybe get it back from her. Um, one of those things, you know, the give and go is yes, always a great play. Go. Keep the defense guessing. That's a good screen. Good ball movement. Missed the three that time. All right, Gophers are passing up some good shots. They should make him. Mrs. Melissa Smith throws up a high arcing shot, no good. Off the glass on the second effort for Taya Mick, the six foot senior post player. 31 to nine, interesting now for Gresham that they can get a good little 7 0 8 0 run to end the quarter. They can really make it interesting later on in the game. In the lane, nice thing to roll up and in for Blake. And they're going right back in the post, and why not? Points in the paint have worked well for St. Mary's Academy so far in this first half. 
Ball down the floor, Pesca gets it up and gets the roll. Beautiful play. That was a good pass, almost the full length of the court to get that open shot. And St. Chris come back the other way, deflection. On the floor comes Gresham with the steal. Here comes Walton, down the floor, to the hoop, and he sees fouled. Nice aggressive play for Gresham, and now they'll get rewarded with some free throws. They need to, and this is now the eighth team foul on St. Mary's Academy, but it's going to be two free throws nevertheless. Bailey Walton did a good job taking it to the hoop there. Yes. It was a pretty aggressive foul, um, making sure she didn't get a shot up, but um, she'll get two free throws here. And the foul committed on Davis. That will be her first foul of the game. The free throw off of the mark by Walton. And at this point, you don't want to be missing any free throws, especially when you're coming back, being a little more aggressive, getting in the paint, and not being intimidated by the St. Mary Academy's defense. And being pressured as well. Second shot, back iron, offensive rebound for Gresham. Ball on the floor and recovered. 140 left in the first half. 33-11. Good spacing for Gresham. Trying to deny the ball. It's St. Mary's dribble drive right down the lane. Foul called. Nice drive again by Walton. That's twice she's been going baseline, and now she can get with her get back to the line and redeem herself with a couple of hoops here. Again, she's doing a really good job being aggressive, putting yes. herself in the right spot at the right time, getting to the foul line. Holly Furr, her first foul of the game, ninth team foul. So after this foul, any on-the-ball fouls for St. Mary's will resolve into foul shots for Gresham. So that's going to be really key if Gresham can continue to play aggressive. Sec first foul shot up, no good. 90 seconds left for the first half. But a good, good showing for Gresham so far in the first half. They're really bringing the intensity just a little bit. Second foul shot, no good. Offensive rebound thrown up, no by Mick, and rebound on the floor. Loose ball, Gresham got it. Something's really changed for Gresham going from this uh, first quarter to the second quarter. They, they're playing a lot more aggressive, a lot more under control. Three-pointer by Pesca is around and out. Bounced twice, rebound for St. Mary's. Down the floor comes Sellers. Hands it off for Blake to the hoop. Goes with the two-hand layup, no good, and rebound by Gresham. Need to keep the ball controlled down. Less than a minute now in the first half of play. Gresham down 33-11. Pesca. Lands aggressive. Now the double team shows for St. Mary's. They kick it out. Walton. Out to Pesca. They can get a two for one if they can get a good play offensively or they can just run out the clock. They just need to get good ball move. There's a good play. Off the space and foul. There's a good foul. McCowan will pick, Sellers, I should say, will pick up the foul. Gresham did a good job there. They were rotating the ball on the, uh, on the top side. St. Mary's is trying to trap out there, so defenders are playing a little bit behind. She closed out a little bit late. She gave her the pump fake dribble drive into the lane uh, with the shot and got the foul. And the free throw, no good by Walton. I think that's her fourth foul shot missing a row in this quarter, and you need to make your free throws down the stretch, especially, like I mentioned, to make a good run and get the intensity going and keep it going on the in the next play. One more up for Pesca is no good. Rebound taken by St. Mary's, 33 seconds for the half. Ball caught for St. Mary's, intercepted by Gresham. Nice play defensively by Walton. Walton. And now they can hold for one if they go for it. And you would like to see a good screen and roll here, wouldn't you, PJ, to get a good spacing and good shot selection? Yeah, maybe a back screen too. Oh, yeah. There's a back screen right there, but they missed. They missed Walton back door. Eight seconds for the half. In it comes to Pesca. Down the lane. Kicks it out. Bobbled. Jumper will not take at the buzzer as Belonzo mad at herself and not getting a shot up in time. End of the first half. St. Mary's in control, 33 to 11. We'll be back with halftime analysis for you on Metro East Sports. A full life measured in seats starts with the right ones early on. 
car crashes are the number one killer of children 1 through 13. Learn how to prevent deaths and injuries by using the right car seat for your child's age and size. This has been a good first half for St. Mary's. No discount to Gresham. They are really catching up in terms of the intensity of the game. And that's what they really need to do in the second half. They need to get good ball movement, get some maybe get some good screens, do all the little things they can do to at least wither down the deficit. Yeah, there's a definite difference in the first quarter and the second quarter for Gresham. They were playing a lot more aggressive in that second quarter, a lot more under control. So they need to bring some more of that here in the uh, second half. 33-11 the score as we start this third quarter. And there's a good steal out of the timeout for Gresham. Good thing that it's a good start for them. Get the intensity on both sides of the floor down. But again, they Gresham has to not lose the ball so much. There it is again right there and recovered in the backcourt. Luckily, again, there's no shot clock here in high school. So Absolutely. they can take their time, get a good shot. They're not in a rush to do anything right now. But foul trouble also on Gresham's shot on Gresham's side in this quarter. Nice move by Chapel puts one up. But it's out of bounds to Gresham. They'll keep it on their end of the basket. But I like the aggressive. They're going right to the hoop. But again, the active hands for St. Mary's. The Blues are really doing a good job going after the ball. And there's another steal by St. Mary's. That was Blake right there with the steal. And that was a pretty good block earlier by Wooten. Yeah. So yeah. we haven't seen a lot of uh, Gresham out at the top. And St. Mary's picked up their dribble way up at the top of the key. And double dribble called on St. Mary's. So they get a little bit of a stake on their side. Gresham will claim it. But again, good press defense for St. Mary's. They're really going after that ball, not at the, the person, but at the ball. That's what they really want to do. Walton with it the other way off the screen. Hands off to Pesca. Ball deflected and recovered, taken away by St. Mary's. Here comes the Blues down the floor. Tip pass, caught, recovered, thrown up, and missed by McCowan. Put up on the second effort is good. That's CeCe Wooten doing a good job of getting that board. She had three Gresham players around her, but she did a good job of boxing out, putting herself in a good position to get that rebound, put it back up for the two points. Let alone being composed, too. Most people would, you know, not be able to go after that ball and be afraid. There's a nice strip. Good defense. Good poke by Walton on the fast break, stopping McCowan. And St. Mary's will inbound. It's two defensive plays right there in a row. Blake, double drive, back door, out of bounds, goes to Gresham. They were trying to find Wooten on the inside in the back door and just missed, the, just did not catch the ball in time. Davis will come out for St. Mary's and Jackie Lance will sub in. Gophers down 35-11, 6 remaining in the third quarter. As Pesca. Gets past the timeline. Let's see what she does with the ball. Open shot for three. Walton, no good. Rebound taken by St. Mary's. To my knowledge, I don't think Russell has hit a three-pointer yet in this game. They've got some shots inside. Good defense zone for the Gophers. Man-man coverage. Don't allow the opening. Coach Starbest said that Gresham is not going to play any zone, so they're going to be playing a lot of man-to-man -man pressure defense. Pesca picks up the foul for Gresham, her first of the second half. In the low post goes Blake, puts one up, bumping, got some space, and the finish over Chapel. That's really good footwork there by Blake. Yes. Um, she did a good job of getting her spacing. Um, she kind of bumped into the defensive player, got the spacing she needed to put up a good shot. Rushing back the other way. And it comes to Allen. Five and a half remaining in the third quarter. Ball deflected and stolen away by Wooten. Two on one, break three on one if they hurry. Wooten shoots it up and no good. Short got, a, got, a, got her own miss, put it up, blocked partially, but recovered on the third effort on the play. Give credit for Bill Brew on the finish. Five minutes left, 39 to 11, the score. Still a lot of time for Gresham, but they need to act quickly to make a good little run. Ball deflected off of the leg of St. Mary's. They will recover with Gresham. 
Coach Sarah Beth made a good point um, during halftime that they're holding St. Mary's to some, they're making them miss some shots, but it's those second chance opportunities that they're giving up. They need to box out off after those first shots. Another bobble, dribble, and down the floor. Traveling violation on St. Mary's. Looked like Wooten shuffled her feet before she passed it down the floor. Turnover. Four forty-one left in the third. But so far, I'm liking Gresham to actually get down the floor, get good ball movement, and get to the hoop strong. And another turnover, and here they come the other way. St. Mary's down the floor, Lance to the hoop, hands it off to Bilbrew, and she lays it in. Forty-one to eleven, a thirty-point lead. But there's still time for Gresham to at least make it a little bit marginal here. Lance did a great job of. Uh getting that pass over run in the break right there. Offensive rebound for Gresham on the three-point miss. Fake by Allen, goes to the drive and fouled. Looks like she got her on the fingers that time. Bailey Allen is doing a good job. She was in some foul trouble there in the first half and that really um, hurts Gresham. So it's good to see her back here in the game. Um, look for her to be continue to be aggressive. Tyshell Blake, her first foul. And two free throws coming for Gresham. They have not done well at the line in this half, or in the game, rather. Another missed foul shot by Allen. I'm going to go into coach mode. You got to make your free throws. Yes. If I had to be a scientist on this, they probably have made two foul shots and missed 11. That could be off. Second foul shot is good. But this is the time they need to act now if you're Gresham. Need to get the pace going. Double team comes ball off. And it's back to St. Mary's. Boy, that was a dangerous play there. As, they, as Gresham almost looked for the steal that time. Lob down the floor. Caught by Blake. Goes to the hoop and lays it in with the left hand. Four minutes remaining. It's 43-12. to 12. Advantage for the Blues. It's good to see these high school players able to use their offhand um, yeah. and make a shot like that. And timeout taken by Gresham. And I think this will go for a full. Let's take a look. It will be 30. Very second timeout. So we'll keep it here. So far in this half, or in this quarter, PJ, St. Mary's are looking pretty good. They're just coming right out of the halftime intermission. They're playing the same kind of tempo they are right now, pressing on the defensive end, grabbing the turnovers, and actually getting points off the turnovers. That's been the main story through three so far. Yeah, and it's good to see that both teams are coming out really aggressive. You know, when the score can get, you know, lopsided. Yeah, you know, kind of uh, where both teams are, you know, they could lose their focus. Right. And both teams came out of the second half, and they're really focused. They want to play hard. They're giving it everything they got still. Yes. So that's always a great thing to see. And also Gresham, the Gophers so far, they're really doing a good job in this quarter being disciplined. They haven't been too many fouls in this quarter, one on each team so far in this half, in this quarter. Composure is going to be also a factor as ball deflect out of bounds. Remain Gresham, ball. But composure is going to be really key for Gresham in the upcoming games because when you play good teams like St. Mary's or Central Catholic or any of those, you really have to be active and get some good plays. De and go for his cross-court pass, intercepted on the floor, and a foul on the push-off. It's a hard hit down the floor. That's going to be on Bailey Allen, and I believe that will be her third foul. Her oh, fourth. fourth foul. So in, in high school, you can only have five, and then you're out. Yeah, so she's going to have a seat on the bench here. St. Mary's up 43-12, to 12, three and a half under in the quarter. Good steal by Gresham. Give credit down the floor. Missed by Peska, and recovered for Gresham out of bounds. But I like the energy, though. They got the steal. They go on the fast break. They were unable to score, but they get another possession. I bet you uh, they coach talked about that at halftime. That's the same play they've run about five or six times. Yes. And that time she did a good job of just stepping right into the passing lane to get that steal. Ball deflected again. Gresham ball. The one thing that gets in the Gresham's mind is can, can, can you be composed? And if you play against a high-energy team like is trying to get it in and succession, but a steal by St. Mary's, another turnover. On Gresham, down the floor. Good defense contained, but a better hoop for McCowan. 
The St. Mary's team is really athletic. They do a good job of getting up and down the court. Anytime that there's a fast break opportunity, they're they're taking advantage of it. And let alone they're one of the good teams in steals as well. That's why they have a lot of long arms. And you point out athleticism. It's a foul on the play. It will be free throws. And I believe that will be on Holly Furr. Second team foul in the quarter on St. Mary's. Second foul on Furr. Free throws at the line for Gresham. And the first free throw up and good. Travel does not have an easy task here today playing against players that are, you know, good two, three inches taller than her all day. Mm -hmm. And she's done a good job of battling down low, getting yes. rebounds when she can, making some shots. She's having to do it on both ends of the floor. And a second free throw reamed in. 45-14, St. Mary's in total command so far through three. So a lot of, a lot of time left. Gresham would like to get on a good run. They just need good defense. That's a good screen set by Allen. Three-pointer left baseline is off the mark. Rebound tapped on the second effort. Good. Jackie Lance with a nice field goal. And the lead increased to 33. 47-14. To try and get it into the front court and in succession does for Peska. Another turnover. Off and running comes St. Mary's. Three-pointer from the left corner is right through the bottom. Good shot from McCowan. The first three that I can even count because both teams have not shot well from deep. But a good, good one there for McCowan to get her confidence going from the perimeter. Two minutes left in the third. Another takeaway by Allen. Down the hoop, fouled. Lance took good contact and will reward it with two free throws. You know, that was actually a pretty good foul. It was yes. a three on one. Um, take the foul right there, make him make some free throws. Don't give him anything easy. Um, good foul. Fundamental basketball. Free throw up and good for Lance. And we see reserves in off the floor for both for Gresham, Taya Mick back in off the bench. And Irene Medina in on the floor, the junior. One more coming up at the line for Lance. So far, it seems like Gresham, they really want to get as aggressive, but they get too aggressive, mostly on the offense. They really aren't disciplined on defense. And the big league continues to grow, grow for St. Mary's as they're at 52-14. Less than two to go in the third. A lot of time left, though, to make this a little bit of a respectable game. Gophers get the ball. Bounce pass to the left. Double team comes as Medina gets rid of it. It is good double team. Again, they're just really clocking the inside and outside jump shot. No good by Santangelo. Offensive rebound for Gresham. That's a good sign. Get on the offensive glass. Get a new possession. Off the legs. Out of bounds. I believe will return Gresham. Yes. Looked like McCowan had it off her leg on a loose ball. Good thing St. Mary's has a pretty deep bench because they play very, very aggressive. And they're, they're running the whole game. Off the shot, no good. Short of the rim. She got her own miss and a, and a foul call. It almost looked like a jump ball. But a good foul. Got contact. And I think this will be free throws. No, it will not be free throws. She did not get it up in the active shooting. Foul on Diana Allen. That will be her first for St. Mary's. Inbounds far in the backcourt to Melissa Smith. Lost off her own hand. Another turnover and recovered by Gresham off the hand of St. Mary's. Turnover the other way. So end and we go. McGowan. Long hands. But off, her, off herself for the turnover. Less than a minute now in the third. Double team comes. Pressure in the backcourt. Ball deflected, and another steal for St. Mary's. One on two, taking it herself, put one up, and fouled. Jackie Lance has been all over the floor in this second quarter, or third quarter, going after the ball, going for that fast break opportunity. She did a good job there of going into the body of the defender. Yes. She could have kind of gone away or gone straight up, but instead she attacked the defender, put her body into it to draw that foul. 
And the free throw up and good. That foul committed on Melissa Smith, her third foul in the fourth team on Gresham. So she will come out and Pearly Walton will come back in for Gresham. 51.3 left in the third quarter. One more at the line for Lance. It is off the mark, rimmed out, rebound grab for Gresham. See, one rebound, they can go down the floor and try to get a good quality basket. You can't reach out for the ball if you're Gresham trying to go after the too much dribbling. Three-pointer on its way, way off the mark. Rebound kept in bounds, but taken by St. Mary's. The Blues are all over the floor right now. Three-pointer from the far corner, well off the mark, off the side of the backboard. Rebound stripped away by St. Mary's. They are all over the floor. Gresham holding on their own, though. Ten seconds left for the third. Dribble drive, 15-foot foul line jumper is right through from McCowan. Five seconds left for the quarter. Rush will inbound it into Pesca, and that will end the third quarter. The score after three, St. Mary's Academy Blues, 55. The Gresham Gophers, 14. We'll be back with fourth quarter action on Metro East Sports. Crack <laughs> Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. And we're back with the start of the fourth quarter. Gresham in in not quite of a good game, 55 to 14, as St. Mary's had the ball deflected. But overall, Gresham has really played well in terms of really trying to match the intensity of St. Mary's in this game, uh, PJ. This is not what they wanted to see in terms of play, but they're really doing good on their own side. Well, it's been a really exciting game up oh, yeah. and down. Fast pace a little bit. Yeah, you know, the results aren't probably what Gresham wants, but right. They're, they're, they got some, a lot of things that they're building on right now. And I think we would likely see bench players come out for both teams. We'll see how that will play out, considering Gresham scoring 50 points plus once again. They're one of those good high-scoring teams. When they get turnovers, they're really hard to stop, especially on situations like tonight. And again, a good Baba, but St. Mary's having good spacing, good Execution on the offensive end and, and mostly on defense, too. They really grab an after steals. Dribble drive, pull up jumper from 14 is no good by Bill Brew and rebound grabbed, snagged by Gresham. That was a good job. One of the best jobs I've seen Gresham do of boxing out yes. every single St. Mary's player. They, de they need to do that more often. Out of bounds, though, pass a little too high for Gresham for Santangelo. But you point out good fundamental ball. Miss, grab, box out, grab the rebound, and go back down the floor for a possession. And we've seen that pretty well from Gresham. The night down the lane, no good put up by St. Mary's. And rebound taken by Gophers. Ball fouled in the backcourt. I think this will be on Sellers as he is reaching in. We'll see. I think one of the interesting things that we'll have to keep watching here in this fourth quarter is what St. Mary's does on offense. You know, they've been able to run up and down the court. It would be nice to see them run some half-court sets, and, you know, I'm sure that they're good at, you know, they're obviously good at running up and down the court and working on their fast break. But, you know, come playoff time, you're going to need to have a half-court game. So it would be interesting to see if they work on that here in the um, this fourth quarter. Blair Sellers picks up her second foul on that last possession. Foul line jump shot is good by Trapple. And you point out good half-court set, good shot selection. And knocking it down. 55-16, six minutes left in the fourth quarter. As it looks like it may be a runaway, we'll see if Gresham can at least wither down the deficit a bit more as a nice finger roll up and in for St. Mary's. As Bilbrew gets another hoop. 57-16. But again, it, it, it seems like every time there's a pass inside and should be a jump ball. It is possession arrow turns to St. Mary's side. One of the adjustments that Gresham has made there is they put that uh, 
a post up at the high post right at the free throw line, yeah. which has given them good angles to be able to pass out of that, hit the player down low in the short corner or down by the block. So good job by Gresham making an adjustment. CC Wooten will sub in for Jackie Lance. Or her, check that for her is ball in play for St. Mary's. Dribble drive right to the rack, no foul called. Got, got enough contact, but rebound for the Gophers. I mean, that's what you like to see for, for St. Mary's. Attack the rim, try to get a play set up, and get some shots. Five and a half to go in the fourth quarter. There's a foul called on St. Mary's as Bilbrew bumped. That's going to happen when you play aggressive defense. Yes. You're going to get those fouls. But as a coach, that's not something you can complain about because right. they're playing so aggressive. Yeah. Tasia Bilbrew picks up her second foul for St. Mary's Academy. Walton hands it off. The 15-footer, good again by Treppel. She can knock that down from about 15 to 17 feet. And that's what you like to see in a, in a solid forward player as a foul. Traveling, traveling, actually. Traveling, excuse me. Yeah, she got that pass. She thinks that she got uh, settled, but the referees thought she moved her foot, so. The Gophers back with it the other way, 57 to 18. Five minutes left in this fourth quarter. In the low post to Chapel. She's got the hot hand, finds it off, and missed the open shot, did Sangelo. Defensive rebound for St. Mary's. Oh, you would have loved to have that play if you're Gresham. Ball up in the air, taken away by Chapel. She's been everywhere in this fourth quarter in the last few minutes. Going after the ball, making some shots. Also going for steals a little bit too. Sid kicks it out to Walton. Uh, gets set up in the offense. Walton lost the ball out of bounds to St. Mary's. I mean, that's the thing also intimidating as we have reserves off the bench for St. Mary's. This has been a pretty, well, good showing for, uh, for St. Mary's. They're really going all over the floor Good defense, athleticism, but you point out the question mark on how they will sell, set in the front court. Who knows if they face off against teams that are aggressive as them. There's a foul on the drive by St. Mary's. Jackie Lance will pick up the foul. And this will be one and one, so free throws the rest of the way for Gresham. As Walton will go for the one and one. Yeah, you talk about St. Mary's and, you know, kind of what their projection is going to be as, you know, this is the first uh, game of league play. Yes. And they're going to be, you know, going against Central Catholic. It's probably going to be one of the top teams that they're going to be going against. And then you have the state tournament after that. So they got to make sure that, you know, their game is complete. They can't just, you know, if they have a game like this where they're in control, they need to make sure that they work on all aspects of their game. Free throw up and good by Walton at the one and one. And one more coming up as Allen checks into the game. For Gresham. Four and a half under in the fourth. The second foul shot is good. Good showing at the line for Walton there. Four and a half remaining. 57 20 the score. As Gresham still has some fouls to give in this game. Dribble drive. Nice pass outside, but off the hands. Off the hands of Wooten. And I unable to catch it. But a good play, though, passing out and find the open man. Let's get off our fingertips just a little too quick. Yeah, that's a good uh, job. And McCown dribbled into the lane. Defender came over to help. She found yes. the open player, just couldn't complete it. So good look there by, M by McCown. Bonzo getting some time on the floor for Gresham. You see on her face, she's really frustrated of trying to Get things going set for her team. Missed shot, offensive rebound for Belonzo. New shot, a new possession, I should say. Pesca, double drive, kicks out. Open three for Allen off the back iron. Rebound grabbed by Trappold. Kicks it out, fake. Kicks it over to Allen from 20. And now she holds and resets. Allen off the screen. Bump, shoots a 20-footer. No good on the right baseline. And rebound St. Mary's. That was a good stop, pull-up jumper right yes. there. Uh, just couldn't uh, execute uh -oh, at the end. Look out, McCowan. Left all alone, hands it off for Wooten, and a jump ball call. It will remain to St. Mary's Arrow. So St. Mary's will keep it on the possession arrow. It should be rotating next time out. But there's Trappled again, down low, fighting with those bigger St. Mary's yes. players. They, yeah, they're really going after the ball. 
Nice, nice, nice play there for Walton. Going after this, going after the ball, deflecting it. Good defensive play. Playing out in the passing lanes. Yes, that's what you have to do, especially in this game. In the lane, nice finger roll up and in for St. Mary's as Ely Sunderland gets a field goal for the, her fourth quarter. Supporting that for Gresham. There's still a lot of games left to be played in the league. Because I believe you'll be facing two games of the same team uh, later on in league. Three minutes left in the fourth. 59-20. Short jumper up and good by Belonzo, the senior point guard for the team. 59-22. Really impressed by Trappled tonight. That she had the assist on that play. She had a dribble drive, found the open player. Nice play outside, 14-footer, high off the rim and rebound by the Gophers. Well, you would like to see McCowan make those more often. There's a steal by McCowan, down the floor, goes to the hoop and lays it in with the right hand. 61-22. For Gresham, that you cannot be intimidated by the defense and athleticism of St. Mary's. Even if it's happened tonight, you learn, you can learn from this game and go to the next. And a nice drive and finger roll by Trapple. Put it up with the right hand and out of bounds to Gresham. So there's a good couple plays there. Good drive, finger roll up and in. And now deflection forces Gresham to get the ball back. Trapple's coming out of the game right now. For Gresham, she's done a great job facing against bigger players. Uh, she's done a good job of uh, all around game. She has a couple assists. She's made some driving lay-ins. She's gotten some rebounds and putbacks. So a good job by her tonight. I mentioned earlier the the Blues of St. Mary's Academy are a good steal team all around the floor. They can go after the ball. They're not like I said. They they don't foul very often despite 17 fouls. As the ball returns to Gresham. Less than two to go in the fourth. As Gresham tries to get in and does in succession, loose off her own hand and back to Gresham. Don't know if that ball is getting slippery or not, but it is not fair well for Gresham, although they've had some good plays down the floor to score. Timeout taken on the floor. And Gresham will call for a timeout. So, so far in this game, PJ, St. Mary's have dominated both sides of the ball from start to finish. They led by 24 in the first. They kept it going. They never looked back. And that's what one of the keys were. You don't want to look back if you're St. Mary's. Once you have a lead, a good start to the run on the road, just don't let it look back. Yeah, and both teams right now, there's two minutes left to go. There's there's still some basketball to play. And if you're Gresham, you got to be looking forward to the next game. Yeah. You want to end this game on a positive note. Yes. Do the little things that you can do. Teach these players, you know, the right way to play throughout. And if you're St. Mary's, you want to make sure that you keep on that good run. You know, you want to make play hard so that when you're coming into your next game, you're playing the same way. Ball deflected out of bounds. And a key thing also, PJ, that Gresham, next game, don't look, you can look at this game and say, what did we do wrong? But the two things that in my mind are in concern for Gresham is what we're seeing here tonight. It's a three-pointer straight away, no good. And a rebound on the floor. It goes to Gresham on the second effort. Composure is one for Gresham. A lot of hot potato with the ball so much, and they cannot get shots down. It's like one, like right there. Just one pass too many, and the ball out of bounds. Back to Gresham. Like whenever a player from Gresham has the ball, St. Mary's goes immediately and double teams. So that's... That's what they do. Go after the ball. Impress them. Steal by St. Mary's. 90 seconds left for the fourth quarter. And again, good ball on the perimeter by St. Mary's. I think they want to get the clock going. That's a good hard screen out in the back by Sellers. She gets it back. In the lane was like they missed her in the paint. And I think for St. Mary's, they want to dribble off the clock. We'll see what happens. That's what they want to do. Nice play in the backcourt, but a foul. Good aggressive defense yes. by Peska right there. Peska. She's got her body up into her, got her arms out. Um, she got she got called for a foul, but 
you know, if you're Coach Sarah Beth for Gresham, you know, that's what you want to see. Absolutely. You really want to be as physical as you can and make those good discipline plays. As that foul on Pesca, her third, 15 foul. Gresham do have two fouls to give, but I don't think that will matter much pending a play from Gresham defensively. Tight skull, Blake for three, <laughs> and out of bounds, a foul call. Looks like they were actually running that play. They were trying to get Blake. As soon as the shot went up, the whole bench stood up. So, looks like they were trying to get uh, Blake an open three-pointer. He's a sophomore. He has a lot of time, though, to get that outside down. It's a foul called on St. Mary's. That will be on Diana Allen. That will be personal foul number two. One and one. So we've been in it for quite a while. We haven't seen a foul much in this fourth. Eighth team foul on St. Mary's. And free throws coming for Medina. The 5'6 junior guard. Medina first foul shot up and in on the one and one. And one more coming up. But she pouring out. This is going to be a learning experience for Gresham. They really want to make it in a good note throughout the year. They want to make some noise. They want to get some impact, get some nominations in there too. But still a lot of time left. They can get better. 61-26 at St. Mary's inbounds and a nice steal. Good play by Allen. Goes to the hoop with the left hand and she's fouled. It's really unfortunate for Gresham. Bailey Allen has been in foul trouble almost the whole game. Yes. Um, she looks like she's very aggressive um, offensively and defensively, getting into the lanes. Um, on offense, she's been able to um, dribble penetration and make some good passes. So, unfortunate that she hasn't been able to play because of foul trouble, but um, when she's in there, she's definitely been a spark plug. Foul and fur, that is the third foul. Missed foul shot by Allen. And one more coming up. The second shot up and good. 29.7 to go, 61 to 27. And St. Mary's will improve on their record so far. Again, they came in the game tied for eighth in state. So that is a good positive stuff for them. Gresham may still have a lot of time to get, to get improved every game. That's all they really want to do is get improved and get a good game. But just tonight was not their night. Down the floor, St. Mary's could not handle the pass as Claire Flynn tried to catch the ball. Maybe would have been a field goal. Chief one eight left. I think Gresham will inbound, and that will do it. Gresham, went, Gresham falls tonight, 61 to 27 over St. Mary's Academy. What a game! Domination for St. Mary's side of the ball. We'll be back with the half with the post game show with some stats and analysis here on Metro Esports. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to Energy Star light bulbs and you'll realize just how much cash you are really burning through. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. The St. Mary's coach, uh, they had a great game tonight, coach. It looks like you guys were focused and ready to play. You didn't get a great challenge, but we know you're going to get one in the next couple of weeks because you got Central Catholic, your arch rivals, uh, coming your way. What do you have to say about that one? Oh, well, that's going to be a tough one. We got the, what, you know, I don't think I've ever coached against a team that had somebody signed with Tennessee and with uh, Stanford. So it's going to be a tough one, but we'll come ready and we'll give them all the fight we can. It's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun. Well, we expect to see a great matchup. These guys are arch rivals. They've been uh, going at it for years. I went to Central Catholic myself, so I'm aware of the uh, seriousness of those games, and I know the girls will be ready to go. So we wish you good luck, Coach, and we'll see you next, next game. Yep. Thanks a lot. Good to see you. All right, it's back to you guys. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jerry. Key thing, yeah, key thing again, Gresham, they may be a game by, by below 500, but there's still a lot of time left for them to get in the run, make well, an impact. 
that's one of the things with the the playoff system, the way it is with the play-in games. Yes. That you know a lot of teams get a, get to make it into those playoff games, so they still got a lot to play for. So they they got to get better week to week in this conference because there's a lot of competition for them to be able to get better and to you know that that third, fourth, fifth spot in this conference is really up for grabs with these teams. You know you got you got to figure that St. Mary's and Central Catholic are going to be up one two, but. After that, there's there's a lot of openings. You know, they they already beat Barlow in the tournament that they just played in. That's right. So you know that's a that's a victory against a, a, a um, league opponent. So lots of things for Gresham to work on. You know, they had some good things. You know, they got to shore up those those little things, the the ball handling, right. uh, coming under control, making good passes, making good decisions, but. The things that you really like to see as a coach, they have the aggression out there. That's right. They were they were getting getting after it on defense, which is one of the things Sarah Beth talked about um, before the game, was that they got to play aggressive defense. That's exactly and, and, right. and they did that when they had the opportunity. All right, next game will be a big one, I believe, at Central Catholic. Big game between two good state teams. Yeah, we're going to be out at uh, the um, Central Catholic High School. Yep. Jesuit boys versus the Central Catholic boys. Both of them are um, very good teams. I actually watched both of them out at the Les Schwab Invitational. Um, they did a great job. Um, Keon Rayner out of uh, Jesuit is a very good player. He's uh, he signed with Princeton, so he's a very smart player as good, well. Good, good. Um, and they got a lot of players on both teams, so it's going to be a very, very good matchup out there. And it should be very exciting, very good pace for both teams. It should be exciting to watch. That does it for our show here tonight in Gresham High School, home of the Gophers. Final score tonight as uh, as St. Mary's blown out the Gresham Gophers 67-25. to We'll see you guys next week for more action from Central Catholic Boys Basketball, approximate time around 7.15 or so. So we'll get that on as well. For P.J. Miller and, Jesse, and for Jerry, I am Sean Phillips and signing out here in Gresham High School. Good night, everybody.